generative ranking cycle. It's where we have a feed water heater, a heater that heats up the feed into the boiler. Before it gets into the boiler, we try to bring that temperature up. And so they call it a feed water heater. And you can have the closed or an open feed water heater. Okay. So what I'm going to do is propose or, or sketch out where how this would happen. And we'd also have superheat and reheat. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep those added features of superheat and reheat, but we'll add now uh, a, an open feed water heater. So we'll put our steam generator here. We have our first pass through that steam generator. Then it comes out and goes into our first turbine stage. After the first turbine stage, it's starting to go back for that reheat, and it will go back for that reheat right there. Okay, but what it's going to do is it's going to divert some of the mass, not all of the mass, but some of the mass down to a feed water heater. It'll come down to this open feed water heater. Now, let me finish out the diagram. This is a jump over. It goes over to the second turbine stage. Out of the second turbine stage goes to the condenser. Out of the condenser, it goes into a pump. The pump goes into that open feed water heater. Now, this feed water heater is not all that special. It's just where two streams mix and have one stream go out. And so it comes out and it goes into, well, actually, yeah, it goes into a pump. And that pump then is what goes like that. Okay. So we have one turbine, two turbine, first pump, second pump, and we divert some mass after the first turbine stage. Instead of reheating it, we bring it down to an open feed water heater. And what it does is this temperature right here going into the steam generator is higher than it would have been without that open feed water heater. Okay. Um, you want to make a table of properties or list the properties. Let's go ahead around and just mark them. State 1, state 2, state 3, state 4, state 5, 6, 7, and 8. So we have 8 states, okay? Let's put on a temperature entropy diagram. Okay, let's put our line of constant pressure high, another line of constant pressure intermediate, and a line of constant pressure low. And we have somehow, because of temperature limits, we've taken that to the limit there. Okay, So we're going to bring it down and then do that, and then bring it down and then condense. And now, if we just condensed and put it up to this high temperature right here, or this high pressure, all of this heating would be used to heat up the cold feed water. And our goal is to get the feed water hotter without burning coal to do it, our expensive fuel source. So we look around in the power plant, we say, hey, there's some steam over there, it's very hot. Let's take a little of that steam to mix it with the... And now that heating is internal to the cycle and not used. There, this temperature, this from 6 to 7, is, it's much higher temperature at 8 and 7 than you could achieve without this open feed water heater. All right. So let me try this, um, and we'll, we'll have numbers for this in a minute, but you understand it, it by visualization. So we, this is always tricky to do because it misrepresents the facts. These would have to be very tight and very, very tight. And so the pressure, the temperature is right there. That's the temperature at state 6, and we mix it with some fluid having the enthalpy and the temperature at 2 such that it comes out at 7 and 7 wants to be saturated liquid. We want 7 to be 
saturated liquid at that intermediate pressure. So from six to seven is heating within the system, not heating done by coal. Then we put it through another pump to put it at eight. And then eight up is now heat from burning my coal. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's all your states on this TS diagram. And when you analyze a problem like this, you want to go ahead and make a property table. So pressure at different states and temperatures at different states, one, two. I'm not going to be able to flush this all the way out because I have it on another slide with all the numbers. But look at the pressures. If you can get the pressures correct at every state, usually you can do pretty good. So the pressure at one is the high. What about the pressure at two? High, intermediate, or low? Intermediate. Pressure at three? Intermediate. Pressure at four? Low. Pressure at five? Low. I have two pumps. That's a clue. Pressure at six? Intermediate. And it has to be the same pressure as the pressure at two, doesn't it? Because they're just mixing. They're just mixing. At two, two and six have the same pressure. So the pressure at 2 is equal to the pressure at 6. How about the pressure at 7? It's just coming out. So guess what? The pressure at 2, the pressure at 6, the pressure at 7 are all the same. Then we go, that's an intermediate pressure. Then we go to pressure at 8, that's back to high. True? So if you march around and get your pressures right, um, it'll really help you. And then... Go ahead and get your enthalpies. If you know how to fix the states, it's, it's just adding just a little more complexity. But we want saturated liquid coming out of the condenser. And we want saturated liquid coming out of the open feed water heater. The way that you determine how much you bleed off, and they put a parameter Y here. Y is the mass fraction that comes out of the first turbine stage that's diverted to make the open feed water heater work. Y is something like 40% or 30%. Okay, it's just a fraction. But what is it? It's going to be the mass that's diverted to feed the top of the open feed water heater. That's this mass flow rate right here. Divided by the mass flow rate going out the first turbine stage or what went through the first turbine stage. So if that is the fraction, what is the fraction that continues on? 1 minus y, true? Does that make sense? Right. So let's do this. Do a mass balance. And just write it like this. Do a mass balance for this uh, um, open feed water heater right here. Okay, if you do that, what you find is that the uh, the um, the amount that went back for the reheat. This is how much went back for the reheat. It goes through the second turbine stage, goes through the condenser, goes through the first pump. That's what feeds into the open feed water heater. So the mass flow rate that went for the reheat plus the mass flow rate that came to the top of the open feed water heater is equal to the mass flow rate that goes into the second pump, which is the same as the mass flow rate that goes into the first turbine stage. Because what goes through the second pump goes through the steam generator on that first pass, goes into the first turbine stage. So just write this like T1. Take this equation, divide by m dot T1, m dot T1, m dot T1 recognize that this is our definition of y and so we have and this is one so we have y is equal to one this is that mass flow rate fraction that goes for the reheating and you just conclude that this is one minus y i don't know if that's too obvious that if y is diverted down one minus y continues true so sometimes I'll write, oh, this is 1 minus y continuing, 1 minus y continuing, 1 minus y continuing. 
1 minus y continuing, and they join up now in the 100%, 100%, 100%, and then we split. We split right there after the first turbine stage. Once we have the mass flows correct, then we go and do an energy balance. If we do the energy balance for the same open feed water heater, it tells us what Y has to be. It gets our equation so that we know, oh, if we want saturated liquid at state 7, Y has to be 31.2%, whatever number it has to be. True? So that's what we're going to do. If you do an energy balance, you'll have that the mass flow rate coming down from to feed the top of the open feed water heater multiplied by its enthalpy, which is enthalpy 2. Isn't that the enthalpy coming down? H2. You add that to the mass flow rate coming from the first pump. Well, the first pump is what went on through, well, just put P1 there. The mass flow rate coming through the first pump, multiply that by H6, and that has to equal the mass flow rate going to the second pump times H7. True? Is that true? So if you divide the whole thing by, let's say, the mass flow rate, the second pump, you'll get H7 is equal to pump 1 divided by pump 2. Isn't that 1 minus Y times H6? And then uh, this is M dot pump 2 and then M dot pump 2. And then mass flow rate that comes down open feed water heater divided by the mass flow rate through the second pump, which is the same as through the first steam generator. This ratio is, what is that ratio? Y. And so now we have just one equation with one unknown, and you find that Y is equal to H7 minus H6 divided by H2 minus H6.